Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this lecture on direct current charging or DC charging of electric vehicles. In this lecture, we are going to learn about three things. What are the key parts of a DC charger? What types of connectors are used for DC charging? And finally, what are the limitations of DC fast charging? DC fast chargers are designed to charge electric vehicles quickly with an electrical output ranging typically between 50 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts and providing up to 400 amperes of current to the battery. During the high power operation, the power electronic converters used for charging become larger and more expensive. That is why DC fast chargers are implemented as an off-board charger rather than as an on-board charger. So that it does not take up space within the vehicle and the fast chargers can be shared by many users. Let us now analyze the key parts and the power flow control for DC charging from the DC charger to the EV battery. In the first step, the alternating current or AC power provided by the AC grid is first converted into direct current or DC using a rectifier inside the DC charging station. Then the power control unit provides a variable DC power to charge the battery by suitably changing the voltage and current of a DC to DC converter. To increase the voltage and current level, multiple power converters can be used in series or in parallel respectively. There are safety interlock and protection circuits on the EV and charger side that are used to de-energize the EV connector and to stop the charging process whenever there's a fault condition or an improper connection between the EV and the charger. The battery management system, or in short, the BMS on both the vehicle, plays a key role of communicating with the charging station to control the voltage and current delivered to the battery and to operate the protection circuits in case of an unsafe situation. For such communication, control area network, shortly referred to as CAN, or power line communication, shortly referred to as PLC, are often used between the EV and the charger. So now that you have a basic idea of the parts and operation of a DC charger, let us now look at the various DC charging connectors that are used. There are five types of DC charging connectors used globally for light duty vehicles. The combined charging system or CCS type one, the CCS type two, the Shardemo connector, the North American charging standard NACS or the Tesla connector, which is used for both AC and DC charging. And finally, the Chinese GBT connector. Charging plugs such as the Chao G and the megawatt charging system or the MCS are not considered here as they are primarily meant for charging heavy duty vehicles and not necessarily light duty vehicles. Let us now look at these five connectors. The combined charging system or CCS in short are integrated connectors for both AC and DC charging. In this slide, the CCS type one connector is shown on the left side and the vehicle inlet is shown on the right side. The CCS type one connector is derived from the alternating current AC type one connector, which is at the top. It retains the same earth pin and the two signal pins, namely the control pilot and the proximity pilot. In addition, two large DC power pins are added to the bottom for DC fast charging. Similarly, the CCS type two connector is derived from the AC type two connector at the top. It facilitates three phase AC charging and retains the earth pin, the control pilot and the proximity pilot. Similarly, two DC power pins are added to the bottom for high power DC charging. Unlike type one and type two AC connectors that use pulse width modulation or PWM signaling, on the control pilot for controlling the charging process. Digital control using power line communication or PLC is used both in the CCS type one and type two connectors on the control pilot. The CCS charger is rated for up to 400 amperes of current and up to 1000 volts and can provide a power output of 350 kilowatts. It must be kept in mind that these values are being continuously updated to cater to the voltage and power requirements of upcoming electric vehicles. The third DC co charging connector is the Shademo 
which has three power pins and six signal pins. Shardemo uses a control area network or CAN protocol for communication between the vehicle and the charger. As of now, the voltage and current levels of Shardemo are 1000 volts and up to 400 amperes, thus providing a power of up to 350 kilowatts. The fourth connector is that of Tesla or the North American charging standard, which has been adopted by several car manufacturers in North America. The NACS connectors use the same three power pins for both AC and DC charging and uses a control pilot and proximity pilot similar to the CCS connectors we saw earlier. The voltage and current levels of the NACS are up to 1000 volts in voltage and up to 400 amperes of current and provides up to 250 kilowatt of charging power through the Tesla version 3 superchargers. Finally, let's look at the GBT DC charging connector from China. It has five power pins, two for high power DC charging and two for low power voltage auxiliaries and one for earth. This connector also has four signal pins. Two are for proximity pilot and two pins are for communication via control area network or CAN. As of now, the nominal voltage is 1500 volts with up to 800 amperes of current, providing up to 900 kilowatts of charging power. So DC charging is a critical technology as it allows high power charging and thereby short charging times for the electric vehicle users. At the same time, there are also technical limitations of fast charging that we need to be aware of. First of all, Higher charging currents leads to higher overall losses, both in the charger and in the battery. For example, if the internal resistance of a battery is referred by the letter R, the losses in the battery can be expressed as I square R for simplicity, where I is the charging current. So the losses increases by four times when the charging current is doubled. The second limitation is from the battery. Higher charging powers increases the charging C rate of the battery, and this generally reduces the battery lifetime, especially at low ambient temperature. The effect of C rate can be reduced with a suitable battery thermal management system. The third key limitation is from the charging cable. For any electric vehicle charger, it is important that the cable is flexible and lightweight for people to use. With higher charging current and power, the thicker cables are needed to allow more charging current, as it will heat up due to the losses. The thicker charging cables are generally heavier and less flexible to use. A possible solution is to use thinner cables with inbuilt cooling system, though this increases the complexity and the cost of the charging system. Finally, the actual charging speed is determined by the electric vehicle and not by the charger. This depends on a number of factors, such as the battery cell chemistry, the battery pack design, the battery management system, the age of the electric vehicle, and the operation of the battery thermal management system, which is itself dependent on the ambient temperature. For example, this graph shows the charging curve of various electric vehicles where they are all connected to the same 175 kilowatt electric vehicle fast charger. On the vertical axis is the charging power, and on the horizontal axis is the battery state of charge. We can observe several things. First, we see that the charging power remains high at the beginning in the constant current of CC region of the battery charging, and after the charging power begins to reduce in the constant voltage or CV region. Second, we can see that the state of charge at which the charging power begins to reduce varies between electric vehicle to electric vehicle. Sometimes this can be as low as 30%, thereby significantly increasing the charging time. Finally, depending on the electric vehicle, the charging power may reduce gradually in a straight line like the red curve or in steps like the purple curve, as you can see. So to wrap up, in this lecture, the key parts and operation of a DC charger have been introduced. We have looked at the different types of DC charging connectors used globally, and finally, we analyzed the various limitations of DC fast charging. Thank you for your attention.